Have the uh, chief uh, prosecutors, has anybody been designated uh, to read the appendices? May it please the tribunal, I shall read Appendix A and Appendix B, and the British delegation will read Appendix C. <clears throat> One word of explanation as to Appendix A. The court will have observed that the defendants are seated in the dock in the same order in which they are named in the indictment by a mechanical slip-up they are not named in Appendix A in exactly the same order. I think it would be too much difficulty for the interpreters for me to arrange them in the same order. So if the court will permit, I shall read Appendix A as it is printed. Statement of individual responsibility for crimes set out in counts one, two, three, and four. The statements herein after set forth, following the name of each individual defendant, constitute matters upon which the prosecution will rely inter alia as establishing the individual responsibility of the defendants. Gehring. The defendant Gehring between 1932-1945 was a member of the Nazi party Supreme Leader of the SA, General in the SS, a member and President of the Reichstag, Minister of the Interior of Prussia, Chief of the Prussian Police and Prussian Secret State Police, Chief of the Prussian State Council, Trustee of the Four-Year Plan, Reich Minister for Air, Commander-in-Chief of the Air Force, President of the Council of Ministers for the Defense of the Reich, member of the Secret Cabinet Council, head of the Hermann Goering Industrial Combine, and successor designate to Hitler. The defendant Goering <coughs> used the foregoing positions, his personal influence, and his intimate connection with the Führer <coughs> in such a manner that he promoted the accession to power of the Nazi conspirators and the consolidation of their control over Germany set forth in count one of the indictment. He promoted the military and economic preparation for war set forth in count one of the indictment. He participated in the planning and preparation of the Nazi conspirators for wars of aggression and wars in violation of international treaties, agreements, and assurances set forth in counts one and two of the indictment. And he authorized, directed, and participated in the war crimes set forth in count three of the indictment and the crimes against humanity set forth in count four of the indictment, including a wide variety of crimes against persons and property. Ribbentrop. The defendant Ribbentrop between 1932 and 1945 was a member of the Nazi party, a member of the Nazi Reichstag, advisor to the Führer on matters of foreign policy, representative of the Nazi party for matters of foreign policy, special German delegate for disarmament questions, ambassador extraordinary, ambassador in London, organizer and director of Dienststelle Ribbentrop, Reich Minister of Foreign Affairs, member of the Secret Cabinet Council, member of the Führer's political staff at General Headquarters, and general in the SS. The defendant Ribbentrop used the foregoing positions, his personal influence, and his intimate connection with the Führer in such a manner that he promoted the accession to power of the Nazi conspirators as set forth in count one of the indictment. He promoted the preparations for war set forth in count one of the indictment. 
He participated in the political planning and preparation of the Nazi conspirators for wars of aggression and wars in violation of international treaties, agreements, and assurances, as set forth in counts one and two of the indictment. In accordance with the Fuhrer principle, he executed and assumed responsibility for the execution of the foreign policy plans of the Nazi conspirators set forth in count one of the indictment. And he authorized, directed, and participated in the war crimes set forth in count three of the indictment and the crimes against humanity set forth in count four of the indictment, including more particularly the crimes against persons and property in occupied territories. Hess. The defendant Hess, between 1921 and 1941, was a member of the Nazi party, deputy to the Führer, Reich minister without portfolio, member of the Reichstag, member of the Council of Ministers for the Defense of the Reich, member of the Secret Cabinet Council, successor designate to the Führer after the defendant Goering, a general in the SS and a general in the SA. The defendant Hess used the foregoing positions, his personal influence and his intimate connection with the Führer in such a manner that he promoted the accession to power of the Nazi conspirators and the consolidation of their control over Germany set forth in count one of the indictment. He promoted the military, economic, and psychological preparations for war set forth in count one of the indictment. He participated in the political planning and preparation for wars of aggression and wars in violation of international treaties, agreements, and assurances set forth in counts one and two of the indictment. He participated in the preparation and planning of foreign policy plans of the Nazi conspirators set forth in count one of the indictment. He authorized, directed, and participated in the war crimes set forth in count three of the indictment and the crimes against humanity set forth in count four of the indictment, including a wide variety of crimes against persons and property. Carlton Brunner. The defendant Carlton Brunner, between 1932-1945, was a member of the Nazi party, a general in the SS, a member of the Reichstag, a general of the police, State Secretary for Security in Austria, in charge of the Austrian police, police leader of Vienna, Lower and Upper Austria, head of the Reich Main Security Office, and chief of the security police and security service. The defendant, Carlton Brunner, used the foregoing positions and his personal influence in such a manner that he promoted the consolidation of control over Austria, seized by the Nazi conspirators as set forth in count one of the indictment. And he authorized, directed, and participated in the war crimes set forth in count three of the indictment and the crimes against humanity set forth in count four of the indictment, including particularly the crimes against humanity involved in the system of concentration camps. Rosenberg. The defendant Rosenberg, between 1920 and 1945, was a member of the Nazi party, Nazi member of the Reichstag, Reich's ladder in the Nazi party for ideology and foreign policy, the editor of the Nazi newspaper Völkische Beobachter, or the People's Observer, and of the NS Monatshefter, head of the foreign political office of the Nazi party, special delegate for the entire spiritual and ideological training of the Nazi party, Reich Minister for the Eastern Occupied Territories, organizer of the Einsatzstab Rosenberg, 
a general in the SS, and a general in the SA. The defendant Rosenberg used the foregoing positions, his personal influence and his intimate connection with the Führer in such manner that he developed, disseminated, and exploited the doctrinal techniques of the Nazi conspirators set forth in count one of the indictment. He promoted the accession to power of the Nazi conspirators and the consolidation of their control over Germany set forth in count one of the indictment. He promoted the psychological preparations for war set forth in count one of the indictment. He participated in the political planning and preparation for wars of aggression and the consolidation of their control over Germany set forth in count one of the indictment. He authorized, directed, and participated in the war crimes set forth in count three of the indictment and the crimes against humanity set forth in count four of the indictment including particularly the war crimes and crimes against humanity involved in the administration of occupied territories. Bormann. The defendant Bormann between 1925 and 1945 was a member of the Nazi party, member of the Reichstag, a member of the staff of the Supreme Command of the SA, founder and head of Hilfskasse der NSDAP, Reichleiter, chief of staff office of the Führer's deputy, head of the party chancery, secretary of the Führer, member of the Council of Ministers for the Defense of the Reich, organizer and head of the Volkssturm, a general in the SS and a general in the SA. The defendant Bormann used the foregoing positions, his personal influence, and his intimate connection with the Führer in such a manner that he promoted the accession to power of the Nazi conspirators and the consolidation of their control over Germany set forth in count one of the indictment. He promoted the preparations for war set forth in count one of the indictment, and he authorized directed and participated in the war crimes set forth in count three of the indictment and the crimes against humanity set forth in count four of the indictment, including a wide variety of crimes against persons and property. Frick. The defendant Frick between 1932-1945 was a member of the Nazi party, Reichsleiter, General in the SS, member of the Reichstag, Reich Minister of the Interior, Prussian Minister of the Interior, Reich Director of Elections, General Plenipotentiary for the Administration of the Reich, Head of the Central Office for the Reunification of Austria and the German Reich, Director of the Central Office for the Incorporation of Sudetenland, Memel, Danzig, the Eastern Occupied Territories, Erpen, Malmedy, and Moreno, Director of the Central Office for the Protectorate of Bohemia, Moravia, and the Government General, Lower Styria, Upper Carinthia, Norway, Alsace, Lorraine, and all other occupied territories, and Reich Protector for Bohemia and Moravia. The defendant Frick used the foregoing positions, his personal influence, and his intimate connection with the Führer in such manner that he promoted the accession to power of the Nazi conspirators and the consolidation of their control over Germany set forth in count one of the indictment. He participated in the planning and preparation of the Nazi conspirators for wars of aggression and wars in violation of international treaties agreements and assurances set forth in count one and two of the indictment, and he authorized, directed, and participated in the war crimes set forth in count three of the indictment and the crimes against humanity set forth in count four of the indictment, 
including more particularly the crimes against persons and property in occupied territories. Lie. The defendant lied between 1932-1945 was a member of the Nazi Party. Reichleiter, Nazi Party organization manager. I might have meant reading that if you prefer. Member of the Reichstag, leader of the German Labor Front, a general in the SA, and joint organizer of the Central Inspection for the Care of Foreign Workers. The defendant Lai used the foregoing, influ uh, foregoing positions, his personal influence and his intimate connection with the Fuhrer, in such a manner that he promoted the accession to power of the Nazi conspirators and the consolidation of their control over Germany as set forth in count one of the indictment. He promoted the preparation for war set forth in count one of the indictment. He authorized, directed, and participated in the war crimes set forth in count three of the indictment. And in the crimes against humanity set forth in count four of the indictment, including particularly the war crimes and crimes against humanity relating to the abuse of human beings for labor in the conduct of the aggressive war. Zaukel. The defendant Zaukel, between 1921 and 1945, was a member of the Nazi party, Gauleiter and Reich, Reichstag Halter of Thuringia, a member of the Reichstag, general plenipotentiary for the employment of labor under the four-year plan, joint organizer with the defendant Lai of the Central Inspection for the Care of Foreign Workers, a general in the SS and a general in the SA. The defendant Zaukel used the foregoing positions and his personal influence in such a manner that he promoted the accession to power of the Nazi conspirators set forth in count one of the indictment. He participated in the economic preparation for wars of aggression and wars in violation of treaties, agreements, and assurances set forth in counts one and two of the indictment. He authorized, directed, and participated in the war crimes set forth in count three of the indictment and the crimes against humanity set forth in count four of the indictment, including particularly the war crimes and crimes against humanity involved in forcing the inhabitants of occupied countries to work as slave laborers in occupied countries and in Germany. Speer. The defendant Speer, between 1932-1945, was a member of the Nazi party, Reichleiter, member of the Reichstag, Reich Minister for Armaments and Munitions, Chief of the organization TOT, General Plenipotentiary for Armaments in the Office of the Four-Year Plan, and Chairman of the Armaments Council. The defendant Speer used the foregoing positions and his personal influence in such a manner that he participated in the military and economic planning and preparation of the Nazi conspirators for wars of aggression and wars in violation of international treaties, agreements, and assurances set forth in counts one and two of the indictment. And he authorized, directed, and participated in the war crimes set forth in count three of the indictment and the crimes against humanity set forth in count four of the indictment, including more particularly the abuse and exploitation of human beings for forced labor in the conduct of aggressive war. Funk. The defendant Funk, between 1932-45, was a member of the Nazi party, economic advisor of Hitler, national socialist deputy to the Reichstag, press chief of the Reich government, 
State Secretary of the Reich Ministry of Public Enlightenment and Propaganda, Reich Minister of Economics, Prussian Minister of Economics, President of the German Reichsbank, Plenipotentiary for Economy, and member of the Ministerial Council for the Defense of the Reich. The defendant Funk used the foregoing positions, his personal influence, and his close connection with the Führer in such a manner that he promoted the accession to power of the Nazi conspirators and the consolidation of their control over Germany set forth in count one of the indictment. He promoted the preparations for war set forth in count one of the indictment. He participated in the military and economic planning and preparation of the Nazi conspirators for wars of aggression and wars in violation of international treaties, agreements, and assurances set forth in counts one and two of the indictment. And he authorized, directed, and participated in the war crimes set forth in count three of the indictment and the crimes against humanity set forth in count four of the indictment, including more particularly crimes against persons and property in connection with the economic exploitation of occupied territories. Schacht. The defendant Schacht, between 1932-45, was a member of the Nazi Party, a member of the Reichstag, Reich Minister of Economics, Reich Minister without portfolio, and President of the German Reichsbank. The defendant Schacht used the foregoing positions, his personal influence, and his connection with the Führer in such a manner that he promoted the accession to power of the Nazi conspirators and the consolidation of their control over Germany set forth in count one of the indictment. He promoted the preparations for war set forth in count one of the indictment. And he participated in the military and economic plans and preparation of the Nazi conspirators for wars of aggression and wars in violation of international treaties agreements and assurances set forth in counts one and two of the indictment. Poppin. The defendant Poppin between 1932-45 was a member of the Nazi party, a member of the Reichstag, Reich Chancellor, Vice Chancellor under Hitler, Special Plenipotentiary for the Tsar, negotiator of the Concordat with the Vatican, Ambassador in Vienna, and Ambassador in Turkey. The defendant Poppin used the foregoing positions, his personal influence, and his close connection with the Führer in such manner that he promoted the accession to power of the Nazi conspirators and participated in the consolidation of their control over Germany set forth in count one of the indictment. He promoted the preparations for war set forth in count one of the indictment, and he participated in the political planning and preparation of the Nazi conspirators for wars of aggression and wars in violation of international treaties, agreements, and assurances set forth in counts one and two of the indictment. Krupp. Shall I read that one, Mr. President? I think so. The defendant Krupp was between 1932 and 45, head of Friedrich Krupp, R. Gay, gone, a member of the General Economic Council. President of the Reich Union of German Industry and head of the group for mining and production of iron and metals under the Reich Ministry of Economics. The defendant Krupp used the foregoing positions, his personal influence, and his connection with the Führer in such a manner that he promoted the accession to power of the Nazi conspirators and the consolidation of their control over Germany set forth in count one of the indictment. He promoted the preparation for war set forth in count one of the indictment. He participated in the military and economic planning and preparation of the Nazi conspirators for wars of aggression 
and wars in violation of international treaties, agreements, and assurances set forth in counts one and two of the indictment. And he authorized, directed, and participated in the war crimes set forth in count three of the indictment and the crimes against humanity set forth in count four of the indictment, including more particularly the exploitation and abuse of human beings for labor in the conduct of aggressive wars. Neurath. The defendant Neurath between 1932-45 was a member of the Nazi party, a general in the SS, a member of the Reichstag, Reich minister, Reich minister of foreign affairs, president of the secret cabinet council, and Reich protector for Bohemia and Moravia. The defendant Neurath used the foregoing positions, his personal influence, and his close connection with the Führer in such a manner that he promoted the accession to power of the Nazi conspirators set forth in count one of the indictment. He promoted the preparations for war set forth in count one of the indictment. He participated in the political planning and preparation of the Nazi conspirators for wars of aggression and wars in violation of international treaties, agreements, and assurances set forth in counts one and two of the indictment. In accordance with the Führer principle, he executed and assumed responsibility for the execution of the foreign policy plans of the Nazi conspirators set forth in count one of the indictment, and he authorized, directed, and participated in the war crimes set forth in count three of the indictment and the crimes against humanity set forth in count four of the indictment, including particularly the crimes against persons and property in occupied territories. Shirach. The defendant Shirach, between 1924 and 1945, was a member of the Nazi party, a member of the Reichstag, Reich youth leader, on the staff of the SA, SA Supreme Command, Reich Leiter in the Nazi Party for Youth Education, leader of youth of the German Reich, head of the Hitler Jugend, Reich Defense Commissioner, and Reich Stadthalter and Gauleiter of Vienna. The defendant Schirach used the foregoing position, his personal influence, and his intimate connection with the Führer in such a manner that he promoted the accession to power of the Nazi conspirators and the consolidation of their control over Germany set forth in count one of the indictment. He promoted the psychological and educational preparations for war and the militarization of the Nazi-dominated organizations set forth in count one of the indictment. And he authorized, directed, and participated in the crimes against humanity set forth in count four of the indictment, including particularly anti-Jewish measures. Zeisenquart. The defendant Zeisenquart between 1932-1945 was a member of the Nazi party, a general in the SS, state councillor of Austria, Minister of the Interior and Security of Austria, Chancellor of Austria, a member of the Reichstag, a member of the Reich Cabinet, Reich Minister without portfolio, Chief of the Civil Administration in South Poland, Deputy Governor General of the Polish Occupied Territory, and Reich Commissar for the Occupied Netherlands. The defendant, Zeiss Inquart, used the foregoing position and his personal influence in such a manner that he promoted the seizure and the consolidation of control of Austria by the Nazi conspirators set forth in count one of the indictment. He participated in the political planning and preparation of the Nazi conspirators for wars of aggression and wars in violation of international treaties, agreements, and assurances set forth in counts one and two of the indictment and he authorized, directed, and participated in the war crimes set forth in count three of the indictment and the crimes against humanity set forth in count four of the indictment, including a wide variety of crimes against persons and property. 
Stryker. The defendant Stryker, between 1932 and 45, was a member of the Nazi Party, a member of the Reichstag, a general in the SA, Gauleiter of Franconia, editor-in-chief of the anti-Semitic newspaper Der Stürmer, or the Stormer. The defendant Stryker used the foregoing positions, his personal influence, and his close connection with the Fuhrer in such a manner that he promoted the accession to power of the Nazi conspirators and the consolidation of their control over Germany set forth in count one of the indictment. He authorized, directed, and participated in the crimes against humanity set forth in count four of the indictment, including particularly the incitement of the persecution of the Jews set forth in count one and four of the indictment. Keitel. The defendant Keitel, between 1938 and 1945, was chief of the high command of the German armed forces, member of the secret cabinet council, member of the council of ministers for the defense of the Reich, and field marshal. The defendant Keitel used the foregoing positions, his personal influence, and his intimate connection with the Fuhrer in such a manner that he promoted the military preparations for war set forth in count one of the indictment. He participated in the political planning and preparation of the Nazi conspirators for wars of aggression and wars in violation of international treaties, agreements, and assurances set forth in counts one and two of the indictment. He executed and assumed responsibility for the execution of the plans of the Nazi conspirators for wars of aggression and wars in violation of international treaties, agreements and assurances set forth in counts one and two of the indictment. He authorized, directed, and participated in the war crimes set forth in count three of the indictment and the crimes against humanity set forth in count four of the indictment, including particularly the war crimes and crimes against humanity involved in the ill treatment of prisoners of war and of the civilian population of occupied territories. Yodel. The defendant Yodel between 1932 and 1945 was Lieutenant Colonel, Army Operations, Department of the Wehrmacht. Colonel Chief of OKW Operations Department, Major General and Chief of Staff OKW and Colonel General. The defendant Yodel used the foregoing positions, his personal influence and his close connection with the Fuhrer in such a manner that he promoted the accession to power of the Nazi conspirators and the consolidation of their control over Germany set forth in count one of the indictment he promoted the preparations for war set forth in count one of the indictment. He participated in the military planning and preparation of the Nazi conspirators for wars of aggression and wars in violation of international treaties, agreements, and assurances set forth in counts one and two of the indictment. And he authorized, directed, and participated in the war crimes set forth in count three of the indictment and the crimes against humanity set forth in count four of the indictment, including a wide variety of crimes against persons and property. Raider. The defendant Raider between 1928 and 1945 was commander in chief of the German Navy, General Admiral, Gross Admiral, Admiral Inspector, of the German Navy and a member of the Secret Cabinet Council. The defendant Raider used the foregoing positions and his personal influence in such a manner that he promoted the preparations for war set forth in count one of the indictment. He participated in, in the political planning and preparation of the Nazi conspirators for wars of aggression and wars in violation of international treaties, agreements, and assurances 
set forth in counts one and two of the indictment, he executed and assumed responsibility for the execution of the plans of the Nazi conspirators for wars of aggression and wars in violation of international treaties, agreements and assurances set forth in counts one and two of the indictment, and he authorized directed and participated in the war crimes set forth in count three of the indictment, including particularly war crimes arising out of sea warfare. Dönitz. The defendant Dönitz, between 1932 and 1945, was commanding officer of the Vedigan U-boat flotilla, commander in chief of the U-boat arm, vice admiral, admiral, gross admiral, and Commander-in-Chief of the German Navy, advisor to Hitler and successor to Hitler as the head of the German government. The defendant Dönitz used the foregoing positions, his personal influence, and his intimate connection with the Führer in such a manner that he promoted the preparations for war set forth on count one of the indictment. He participated in the military planning and preparation of the Nazi conspirators for wars of aggression and wars in violation of international treaties, agreements and assurances set forth in counts one and two of the indictment. And he authorized, directed, and participated in the war crimes set forth in count three of the indictment, including particularly the crimes against persons and property on the high seas. Fritchie. The defendant Fritchie, between 1933 and 1945, was a member of the Nazi party, editor-in-chief of the official German news agency, Deutsche Nachrichten Bureau, head of the wireless news service, and of the home press division of the Reich Ministry of Propaganda, ministerial director of the Reich Ministry of Propaganda, head of the radio division of the propaganda department of the Nazi party and plenipotentiary for the political organization of the greater German radio. The defendant Fritchie used the foregoing positions and his personal influence to disseminate and exploit the principal doctrines of the Nazi conspirators set forth in count one of the indictment and to advocate, encourage, and incite the commission of the war crimes set forth in count three of the indictment and the crimes against humanity set forth in count four of the indictment, including particularly anti-Jewish measures and the ruthless exploitation of occupied territories. Appendix B. Statement of Criminality of Groups and Organizations. This, the statements here and after set forth following the name of each group or organization named in the indictment as one which should be declared criminal constitute matter, matters upon which the prosecution will rely inter alia as establishing the criminality of the group or organization. The Reich Regierung, Reich Cabinet. The Reich Regierung, Reich Cabinet, referred to in the indictment, consists of persons who were, first, members of the ordinary cabinet after 30 January 1933, the date on which Hitler became Chancellor of the German Republic. The term ordinary cabinet, as used herein, means the Reich ministers, that is, heads of departments and of the central government, Reich ministers without portfolio, state ministers acting as Reich ministers, and other officials entitled to take part in the meetings of the cabinet. Second, members of der Ministerrat für die Reichsverteidigung, Council of Ministers for the Defense of the Reich, Third, members of the Geheime Kabinettsrat, Second Cabinet Council, Secret Cabinet Council. Under the Führer, 
these persons functioning in the foregoing capacities and in association as a group possessed and exercised legislative, executive, administrative, and political powers and functions of a very high order in the system of German government. Accordingly, they are charged with responsibility for the policies adopted and put into effect by the government, including those which comprehended and involved the commission of crimes referred to in counts one, two, three, and four of the indictment. Das Corps der politischen Leiter der national sozialistischen deutschen Arbeiterpartei. Leadership Corps of the Nazi Party. <clears throat> that organization referred to in the indictment consists of persons who were at any time, according to common Nazi terminology, political leader, political leaders of any grade or rank. The political leader comprised the leaders of the various functional offices of the party. For example, the Reichsleitung our party Reich Directorate, and the Gau Leitung, our party Gau Directorate, as well as the territorial leaders of the party, for example, the, for example, the Gau Leiter. The politician Leiter were a distinctive and elite group within the Nazi party proper, and as such were vested with special prerogatives. They were organized according to the leadership principle and were charged with planning, developing, and imposing upon their followers the po policies of the Nazi party. Thus, the territorial leaders among them were called Hoheitsträger, or bearers of sovereignty, and were entitled to call upon and utilize the various party formations when necessary for the ex execution of party policies. Reference is hereby made to the allegations in count one of the indictment showing that the Nazi party was the central core of the common plan of conspiracy therein set forth. The politician Leiter, as a major power within the Nazi party proper and functioning in the capacities above described and in association as a group joined in the common plan or conspiracy and accordingly share responsibility for the crimes set forth in counts one, two, three, and four of the indictment. The prosecution expressly reserves the right to request at any time before sentence is pronounced that political leader of the subordinate grades or ranks or of other types or classes to be specified by the prosecution be accepted from further proceedings in this case number one, but without prejudice to other proceedings or actions against them. <coughs> Die Schutzstaffen der Nationalsozialistischen Deutschen Arbeiterpartei, commonly known as the SS, including the Sicherheitsdienst, commonly known as the SD, the Schutzstaffen der Nationalsozialistischen Deutschen Arbeiterpartei, commonly known as the SS, including the Sicherheitsdienst, commonly known as the SD, referred to in the indictment, consists of the entire corps of the SS and all offices, departments, services, agencies, branches, formations, organizations, and groups of which it was at any time comprised, or which were at any time integrated in it, including, but not limited to, the Algemeine SS, the Waffen SS, the SS Totenkopf Verbände, SS Polizei Regimenta, and the Sicherheitsdienst des Reichsführers SS, commonly known as the SD. The SS, originally established by Hitler in 1925 as an elite section of the SA, 
to furnish a protective guard for the Fuhrer and the Nazi party leaders became an independent formation of the Nazi party in 1934 under the leadership of the Reich Fuhrer SS Heinrich Himmler. It was composed of voluntary members selected in accordance with Nazi biological, racial, and political theories, completely indoctrinated in Nazi ideology, and pledged to uncompromising obedience to the Fuhrer. After the accession of the Nazi conspirators to power, it developed many departments, agencies, formations, and branches and it extended its influence and control over numerous fields of governmental and party activity. Through Heinrich Himmler, as Reichsführer SS and chief of the German police, agencies and units of the SS and of the Reich were joined in operation to form a unified repressive police force. The Sicherheitsdienst des Reichsführers SS, commonly known as the SD, a department of the SS, was developed into a vast espionage and counterintelligence system which operated in conjunction with the Gestapo and criminal police in detecting, suppressing, and eliminating tendencies groups and individuals deemed hostile or potentially hostile to the Nazi party, its leaders, principles, and objectives, and eventually was combined with the Gestapo and criminal police in a single security police department, the Reich Main Security Office. Other branches of the SS developed into an armed force and served in the wars of aggression referred to in counts one and two of the indictment. Through other departments and branches, the SS controlled the administration of concentration camps and the execution of Nazi racial, biological, and resettlement policies. Through its numerous functions and activities, it served as the instrument for ensuring the domination of Nazi ideology and protecting and extending the Nazi regime over Germany and occupied territories. It thus participated in and is responsible for the crimes referred to in counts one, two, three, and four of the indictment. The Geheime Staatspolizei. Secret State Police, commonly known as the Gestapo. The Geheime Staatspolizei, Secret State Police, commonly known as the Gestapo, referred to in the indictment, consists of the headquarters, departments, offices, branches, and all the forces and personnel of the Geheime Staatspolizei organized or existing at any time after 30 January 1933 including the Geheime Staatspolizei of Prussia and equivalent secret or political police forces of the Reich and the components thereof. The Gestapo was created by the Nazi conspirators immediately after their accession to power. First in Prussia by the defendant Goering and shortly thereafter in all other states in the Reich. These separate, secret, and political police forces were developed into a centralized, uniform organization operating through a central headquarters and through a network of regional offices in Germany and in occupied territories. Its officials and operatives were selected on the basis of unconditional acceptance of Nazi ideology were largely drawn from members of the SS and were trained in SS and SD schools. It acted to suppress and eliminate tendencies, groups and individuals deemed hostile or potentially hostile to the Nazi party 
its leaders, principles, and objectives, and to repress resistance and potential resistance to German control in occupied territories. In performing these functions, it operated free from legal control, taking any measures it deemed necessary for the accomplishment of its mission. Through its purposes, activities, and the means it used, it participated in and is responsible for the commission of the crimes set forth in counts one, two, three, and four of the indictment. Die Sturmabteilungen der Nationalsozialistischen Deutschen Arbeiterpartei, commonly known as the SA. That organization referred to in the indictment was a formation of the Nazi party under the immediate jurisdiction of the Führer, organized on military lines, whose membership was composed of volunteers serving as political soldiers of the party. It was one of the earliest formations of the Nazi party and the original guardian of the National Socialist Movement. Founded in 1921 as a voluntary military formation, it was developed by the Nazi conspirators before their accession to power into a vast private army and utilized for the purpose of creating disorder and terrorizing and eliminating political opponents. It continued to serve as an instrument for the physical, ideological, and military training of party members and as a reserve for the German armed forces. After the launching of the wars of aggression, referred to in counts one and two of the indictment, the SA not only operated as an organization for military training, but provided auxiliary police and security forces in occupied territories, guided prisoner of war camps and concentration camps, and supervised and controlled persons forced to labor in Germany and occupied territories. Through his, its purposes and activities and the means it used, it participated in and is responsible for the commission of the crimes set forth in counts one, two, three, and four of the indictment. General staff and high command of the German armed forces. The general staff and high command of the German armed forces, referred to in the indictment, consists of those individuals who between February 1938 and May 1945 were the highest commanders of the Wehrmacht, the Army, the Navy, and the Air Forces. The individuals comprising this group are the persons who held the following appointments. Oberbefehlshaber, Der Kriegsmarine, Commander in Chief of the Navy, Chef, and formerly Chef des Stabes, Der Seekriegsleitung, Chief of Naval War Staff, Oberbefehlshaber des Heeres, Commander in Chief of the Army, Chef des Generalstabes des Heeres, Chief of the General Staff of the Army, Oberbefehlshaber der Luftwaffe, Commander-in-Chief of the Air Force, Chef des Generalstabes der Luftwaffe, Chief of the General Staff of the Air Force, Chef des Oberkommandos der Wehrmacht, Chief of the High Command of the Armed Forces, Chef des Führungsstabes des Oberkommandos der Wehrmacht, Chief of the Operations Staff of the High Command of the Armed Forces, Stellvertreter, Chef des Führungsstabes des Oberkommandos der Wehrmacht, Deputy Chief of the Operations Staff of the High Command of the Armed Forces. Commanders in Chief in the field with the status of Oberbefehlshaber of the Wehrmacht, <coughs> Navy, Army, Air Force. Functioning in such capacities and in association as a group, 
at the highest level in the German Armed Forces Organization, these persons had a major responsibility for the planning, preparation, initiation, and waging of illegal wars as set forth in counts one and two of the indictment, and for the war crimes and crimes against humanity involved in the execution of the common plan of conspiracy set forth in counts three and four of the indictment. Appendix C, charges and particulars of violations of international treaties, agreements, and assurances caused by the defendants in the course of planning, preparing, and initiating the wars. One, charge, violation of the Convention for the Pacific Settlement of International Disputes, signed at The Hague, 29th July, 1899. Particulars, in that Germany did, by force and arms, on the date specified in column one, invade the territory of the sovereigns specified in column two, respectively, without first having attempted to settle its disputes with the said sovereigns by Pacific means. 6th April 1941. Kingdom of Greece, 6th April 1941, Kingdom of Yugoslavia. Two, charge, violation of the Convention for the Pacific Settlement of International Disputes, signed at The Hague, 18th October 1907. Particulars, in that Germany did, on or about the date specified in column one, by force of arms invade the territory of the sovereigns specified in column two, respectively, without having first attempted to settle its dispute with the said sovereigns by Pacific means. 1st September 1939, the Republic of Poland. 9th April 1940, the Kingdom of Norway. 9th April 1940, the Kingdom of Denmark. 10th May 1940, the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg. 10th May 1940, the Kingdom of Belgium. 10th May 1940, the Kingdom of the Netherlands. 22nd June 1941, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. 3. Charge. Violation of Hague Convention Number 3, relative to the opening of hostilities, signed on the 18th of October, 1907. Particulars, in that Germany did, on or about the date specified in column one, commence hostilities against the countries specified in column two, respectively, without previous warning, in the form of a reasoned declaration of war or an ultimatum with conditional declaration of war. 1st September 1939, Republic of Poland. 9th April 1940, the Kingdom of Norway, the Kingdom of Denmark. 10th May 1940, the Kingdom of Belgium, the Kingdom of the Netherlands, the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg. 22nd June 1941, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Four, charge, violation of Hague Convention number five, respecting the rights and duties of neutral powers and persons in case of war on land, signed 18th October 1907. Particulars, in that Germany did, on or about the dates specified in column one, by force and arms of its military forces, cross into, invade, and occupy the territories of the sovereigns specified in column two, respectively, then and thereby violating the neutrality of the said sovereigns. 9th April 1940, Kingdom of Norway and the Kingdom of Denmark. 
10th May 1940, the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, the Kingdom of Belgium, and the Kingdom of the Netherlands. 22nd June 1941, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. 5. Charge, violation of the Treaty of Peace between the Allied and Associated Powers and Germany, signed at Versailles, 28th June 1919, known as the Versailles Treaty. Particulars, one, in that Germany did, on and after the 7th of March, 1936, maintain and assemble armed forces and maintain and construct military fortifications in the demilitarized zone of the Rhineland in violation of the provisions of Articles 42 to 44 of the Treaty of Versailles. Two, in that Germany did, on or about the 13th March 1938, annex Austria into the German Reich in violation of the provisions of Article 80 of the Treaty of Versailles. Three, in that Germany did, on or about the 22nd March 1939, incorporate the district of Memo into the German Reich in violation of the provisions of Article 99 of the Treaty of Versailles. Four, in that Germany did, on or about the 1st September 1939, incorporate the free city of Danzig into the German Reich in violation of the provisions of Article 100 of the Treaty of Versailles. Five, in that Germany did, on or about the 16th March 1939, incorporate the provinces of Bohemia and Moravia, formerly part of Czechoslovakia, into the German Reich in violation of the provisions of Article 81 of the Treaty of Versailles. Six, in that Germany did, at various times in March 1935 and thereafter, repudiate various parts of Part 5, military, naval and air clauses of the Treaty of Versailles, by creating an air force, by use of compulsory military service, by increasing the size of the army beyond treaty limits, and by increasing the size of the navy beyond treaty limits. Six, charge, violation of the treaty between the United States and Germany, restoring friendly relations, signed at Berlin, 25th of August, 1921. Particulars, in that Germany did, at various times in March 1935 and thereafter, repudiate various parts of Part 5, military, naval and air clauses of the treaty between the United States and Germany, <coughs> restoring friendly relations by creating an air force, by use of compulsory military service, by increasing the size of the army beyond treaty limits, and by increasing the size of the navy beyond treaty limits. Seven, charge violation of the Treaty of Mutual Guarantee between Germany, Belgium, France, Great Britain, and Italy, done at Locarno, 16th October, 1925. <coughs> Particulars. One, in that Germany did, on or about the 7th of March, 1936, unlawfully send armed forces <coughs> into the Rhineland demilitarized zone of Germany in violation of Article 1 of the Treaty of Mutual Guarantee. Two, in that Germany did, in or about March 1936 and thereafter, unlawfully maintain armed forces in the Rhineland demilitarized zone of Germany in violation of Article 1 of the Treaty of Mutual Guarantee. Three, in that Germany did, on or about 7th March 1936 and thereafter, unlawfully construct and maintain fortifications in the Rhineland demilitarized zone of Germany in violation of Article 1 of the Treaty of Mutual Guarantee. Four, in that Germany did, 
on or about the 10th of May 1940, unlawfully attack and invade Belgium in violation of Article 2 of the Treaty of Mutual Guarantee. Five, in that Germany did, on or about the 10th May 1940, unlawfully attack and invade Belgium without first having attempted to settle its dispute with Belgium by peaceful means in violation of Article 3 of the Treaty of Mutual Guarantee. Eight, charge, violation of the arbitration treaty between Germany and Czechoslovakia, done at Locarno, 16th October, 1925. Particulars, in that Germany did, on or about the 15th of March, 1939, unlawfully, by duress and threats of military might, force Czechoslovakia to deliver the destiny of Czechoslovakia and its inhabitants into the hands of the Führer and Reich Chancellor of Germany without having attempted to settle its dispute with Czechoslovakia by peaceful means. Nine, charge, violation of the arbitration convention between Germany and Belgium done at Locarno, 16th October, 1925. Particulars, in that Germany did, on or about 10th May, 1940, unlawfully attack and invade Belgium without first having attempted to settle its dispute with Belgium by peaceful means. 10. Charge, violation of the arbitration treaty between Germany and Poland, done at Locarno, 16th October, 1925. Particulars, in that Germany did on or about the 1st September 1939, unlawfully attack and invade Poland without first having attempted to settle its dispute with Poland by peaceful means. 11. Charge, violation of convention of arbitration and conciliation entered into between Germany and the Netherlands on 20th May 1926. Particulars, in the Germany without warning, and notwithstanding its solemn covenant to settle by peaceful means all disputes of any nature whatever which might arise between it and the Netherlands, which were not capable of settlement by diplomacy, and which had not been referred by mutual agreement to the Permanent Court of International Justice, did on or about 10th May 1940, with a military force, attack, invade, and occupy the Netherlands, thereby violating its neutrality and territorial integrity and destroying its sovereign independence. 12. Violation of Convention of Arbitration and Conciliation entered into between Germany and Denmark on 2nd June 1926. Particulars in that Germany, without warning, and notwithstanding its solemn covenant to settle by peaceful means all disputes of any nature whatever which might arise between it and Denmark, which were not capable of settlement by diplomacy and which had not been referred by mutual agreement to the Permanent Court of International Justice, did, on or about the 9th of April 1940, with a military force attack, invade and occupy Denmark, thereby violating its neutrality and territorial integrity and destroying its sovereign independence. 13. Charge. Violation of treaty between Germany and other powers <coughs> providing for renunciation of war as an instrument of national policy. Signed at Paris, 27th August 1928. Known as the kellogg briand Pact. Particulars, in that Germany did, on or about the date specified in column one, with a military force, attack the sovereigns specified in column two, respectively, and resort to war against such sovereigns in violation of its solemn declaration, condemning recourse to war for the solution of international controversies. Its solemn renunciation of war 
as an instrument of national policy in its relations with such sovereigns and its solemn covenant that settlement or solution of all disputes or conflicts of whatever nature or origin arising between it and such sovereigns should never be sought except by pacific means. 1st September 1939, Republic of Poland. 9th April 1940, the Kingdom of Norway and the Kingdom of Denmark. 10th May 1940, the Kingdom of Belgium, the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, the Kingdom of the Netherlands. <coughs> 6th April 1941, the Kingdom of Greece and the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. 22nd June 1941, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. 11th December 1941, the United States of America. 14. Charge. Violation of Treaty of Arbitration and Conciliation entered into between Germany and Luxembourg on 11th September 1929. Particulars in the Germany without warning, notwithstanding its solemn covenant to settle by peaceful means all disputes which might arise between it and Luxembourg, which were not capable of settlement by diplomacy, did on or about the 10th May 1940 with a military force attack, invade and occupy Luxembourg thereby violating its neutrality and territorial integrity and destroying its sovereign independence. 15. Violation of the Declaration of Non-Aggression entered into between Germany and Poland on 26 January 1934. Particulars. In that Germany, proceeding to the application of force for the purpose of reaching a decision, did, on or about the 1st September 1939, at various places along the German-Polish frontier, imply, um, employ military forces to attack, invade, and commit other acts of aggression against Poland. 16. Charge. Violation of German assurance given on 21st May 1935 that the inviolability and integrity of the federal state of Austria would be recognized. Particulars in that Germany did, on or about the 12th of March 1938, at various points and places along the German-Austria frontier with a military force and in violation of its solemn declaration and assurance invade and annex to Germany the territory of the federal state of Austria. 17. Charge violation of Austro-German agreement of 11th July 1936. Particulars in the Germany during the period from 12th February 1938 to 13th March 1938 did by duress and various aggressive acts including the use of military force, caused the federal state of Austria to yield up its sovereignty to the German state in violation of Germany's agreement to recognize the full sovereignty of the federal state of Austria. 18. Charge. Violation of German assurances given on the 30th of January 1937, the 28th of April 1939, the 26th of August 1939 and the 6th of October 1939 to respect the neutrality and territorial inviolability of the Netherlands. Particulars in that Germany without warning and without recourse to peaceful means of settling any considered differences <coughs> did on or about the 10th May 1940 with a military force and in violation of its solemn assurances, invade, occupy, and attempt to subjugate the sovereign territory of the Netherlands. 19. Charge. 
violation of German assurances given on the 30th January 1937, the 13th October 1937, the 28th April 1939, the 26th August 1939, and the 6th October 1939 to respect the neutrality and territorial integrity and inviolability of Belgium. Particulars in that Germany, without warning, did on or about the 10th May 1940 with a military force and in violation of its solemn assurances and declarations attack, invade and occupy the sovereign territory of Belgium. 20. Charge, violation of assurances given on 11th March 1938 and 26th September 1938 to Czechoslovakia. Particulars in that Germany, on or about the 15th March 1939, did, by establishing a protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia, under duress and by threat of force, violate the assurance given on 11th March 1938 to respect the territorial integrity of the Czechoslovak Republic and the assurance given on 26 September 1938 that if the so-called Sudeten territories were ceded to Germany, no further German territorial claims on Czechoslovakia would be made. 21. Charge violation of the Munich Agreement and annexes of 29 September 1938. Particulars 1. In the Germany on or about the 15th of March 1939, did, by duress and the threat of military intervention, force the Republic of Czechoslovakia to deliver the destiny of the Czech people and country into the hands of the Führer of the German Reich. Two, in that Germany refused and failed to join in an international guarantee of the new boundaries of the Czechoslovakia state as provided for in Annex No. 1 to the Munich Agreement. 22. Charge. Violation of the solemn assurances of Germany given on 3rd September 1939, 28th April 1939 and 6th October 1939 that they would not violate the independence or sovereignty of the Kingdom of Norway. Particulars in the Germany without warning did on or about the 9th April 1940 with its military and naval forces attack, invade, and commit other acts of aggression against the Kingdom of Norway. 23. Charge, violation of German assurances given on 28th April 1939 and 26th August 1939 to respect the neutrality and territorial inviolability of Luxembourg. Particulars in the Germany, without warning, and without recourse to peaceful means of settling any considered differences, did, on or about the 10th May 1940, with a military force and in violation of the solemn assurances, invade, occupy, and absorb into Germany the sovereign territory of Luxembourg. 24. Charge. Violation of the Treaty of Non-Aggression between Germany and Denmark signed at Berlin, 31st May 1939. Particulars in that Germany, without prior warning, did on or about 9th April 1940, with its military forces, attack, invade and commit other acts of aggression against the Kingdom of Denmark. 25. Charge. Violation of Treaty of Non-Aggression entered into between Germany and the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics on 23rd August 1939. Particulars, one, in that Germany did, on or about 22nd June 1941, employ military forces to attack and commit acts of aggression against the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Two, in that Germany, without warning or recourse to a friendly exchange of views or arbitration, 
did, on or about the 22nd June 1941, employ military forces to attack and commit acts of aggression against the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. 26. Charge. Violation of German assurance given on 6th October 1939 to respect the neutrality and territorial integrity of Yugoslavia. Particulars in that Germany, without prior warning, did, on or about 6th April 1941, with its military forces, attack, invade, and commit other acts of aggression against the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. The tribunal will now adjourn until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. <laughs>